Alone, he loves you. He's for us. He's not against us. Worship him, somebody. Give him glory. Pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's 
lift our hands and let's worship him let's worship him
like him. There's none like him. He's wonderful. He's good to yes, us. He isn't he? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Would you shake a hand around you? Hug somebody's neck if you would. Thank you so much for coming today. Sure good to see all of you today. It is good to be here. I get to ride on. Glory to God. Glory to God. Welcome to Heartland Church. Brother Nate, you gotta come see me, brother. Come on up here. Come on. Come on. This is our champion. Nate Andrews. Man, that belt is fly, my brother. Check that out. Last night, la last night at, uh, over at uh, the gym at Brownwood High School, Nate took the title. Now you just got to keep it. Throw, throwing the whoop down. Man, that was, that, that's a good time. Good time. There was a good crowd. A lot of renovate youth were there. A lot of ecclesia were there. And, uh, um, anything you want to say? Yeah. Yeah. Showing up and supporting me, uh, it was fun, but you know what? I got to give all the glory to God. Amen. 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 Now, while you're standing, Miss Rachel, 
graduated from nursing school, as did Courtney. That's huge, y'all. That is a lot of work. I don't think you can Google your way through nursing school, can you? No. <laughs> uh, and Titus, where is Titus? All right, he's probably with family. Titus graduated from Howard Payne University. <laughs> Titus, we love you, brother. Happy graduation. Huge time, huge time. We got a lot going on in Heartland Church. If you're, if you're ever sitting on a weekend thinking, I'm so bored. <laughs> Folks, there's, there's things you can go support people in. There are things you can do in ministries you can get involved with. I promise you. Miss Bonnie, she's upstairs with those babies. Uh, tremendous Christmas party last night. That was, that was a lot of fun. Speaking of uh, Christmas parties, our body Christmas get-together is coming up uh, a week from today. Am I getting my dates right, Pastor? Okay. You know how, you know how I am on those things. Um, and that's just, that's just going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have karaoke Renovate Youth is going to be serving food and, uh, and uh, collecting the Christmas cash that you haven't spent yet. So be sure you have some. Okay, we want to sow in, into them, but uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, a week from today, out in Heart Rock, uh, again, karaoke and all the goodies going on. It's been a while since we, the last karaoke, we got so busy, we weren't, we weren't able to do it. I'm just saying. Uh, Christmas service, the service before Christmas. I am looking forward to dressing up that morning for a cozy, comfy Christmas service, and we trust you will. It will be, I won't say the only time, but it, it's probably one of the few times where you're just about invited to wear your Christmas jammies uh, to church. Full jammies, okay? We're not... Well, we're just not going to go. Just If you have to think, would this be appropriate? It's not. It's not. If you, have, if you just have to think about it uh, more than once. And uh, that day, the uh, kiddos are going to put on a special Christmas program uh, as well. And, you know, it seems that when we get the kids doing stuff, there's always folks that are extended family that come and watch. I like to see their faces when we come up. There's some big man in a onesie, you know. You just kind of watch for it. It's, uh, it's good. Woman to woman, you ladies, we've got a lot going on, so the 30th will be your next woman to woman. Okay? So be that would be a great time, ladies, to ring out the old and bring in the new. We're going out with a bang. Going out with a bang. So the 30th, right here in the auditorium, woman to woman, uh, if you're not familiar, it's a, it's a time for ladies, about ladies, with ladies, uh, and it's a powerful time uh, to just receive um, from a tremendous group of women, uh, not just at this church, okay? There are, there are lots of ladies that don't attend Heartland Church that do come to woman to woman. Um, it's not Heartland Church woman to Heartland Church woman, it's woman to woman. So remember that. Same thing with noblemen, guys. Uh, if you've got fellas that you're inviting uh, on Thursday mornings, just be sure to remind them that you don't have to go to Heartland Church to come to noblemen on Thursday mornings at 630 out in Heart Rock. Hot coffee and hot Jesus is for everybody. So we want you to come. First time guest this morning, I didn't do it officially. Welcome. It is a pleasure, an honor, and a privilege to have you here uh, with us today. Uh, I assure you, you're not here by chance. It's not a mistake. It's not you didn't just fall through the door. I promise you there is something here for you today. And the first and foremost is the love of Jesus through us. And uh, we appreciate you all uh, being here. Uh, let's see. I got the 16th taken care of, woman to woman. Ecclesia, they had their big Christmas party uh, this week. So we'll keep meeting for those that are still uh, in, in, a, in town, uh, some, of the, some of the college kids uh, leaving for the holidays, but Ecclesia will still meet Monday nights at Casa de Callaway. Connect on Facebook. That's a, that's a great social media way uh, for you guys to get uh, into the flow of what's going on with Ecclesia. I tell you, we, we had 
so much going on this weekend. It seemed like every time I turned on social media, there were great pictures of groups of kids, the Christmas party, and uh, kids at Renovate Youth uh, out at uh, supporting Nate, and uh, Ecclesia supporting Nate, church folks supporting Nate. So, again, there's a lot going on here, and I promise you this next year, this 2018's been a big one. It has. Uh, this next year is going to be even bigger. I promise you, we've got great things. Uh, we are believing for great things. How many of you are believing for something great in your life in this next year? We believe with you. We are, we are hooked up. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to grab that this morning. We were, we were reading this morning in Acts chapter 4, verse 23, and this, this struck me about unity. And being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders have said. Now, their chief priests and elders are telling the disciples, don't be doing things in the name of Jesus. Just don't do it. So they go back, and they tell, tell everybody what's being said. So the thing that strikes me is about that is they, being let go, they went to their own companions. We are companions. We are one. There is unity in the body, and that's an exciting thing. First-time visitors, if you've got a home church, you, we're blessed that you're, you're blessed that you've chosen us this morning to visit. If you're searching for a home church, we are companions. Okay, and we think that you will, we will bear that out in ourselves. Don't know why I needed to bring that back up from this morning, but I did. I'll say this: It's time to take up His tithe and your offering. Yes, it's an exciting time. We get to sow because in Levitic, Leviticus, it tells us that the tithe that's set apart is holy. It's his. So there's never negotiation about, well, do I tithe? Should I tithe? And I just throw this out there. If, if you ever have the conversation of, do I tithe on the gross or the net? Get back in this until you understand the principle of tithing. The tithing is not about what you get to keep. The tithing, the tithe is about what belongs to God, what's been set apart as holy, and what I get the privilege of doing because he, he gave seed to me to begin with. A job is a place that you're appointed. It's not a place where you just go earn money. Now, being appointed there brings forth the fruit of getting paid. And I believe that when you apply yourself as unto God in that appointment, you get more seed. Because the fruit of your serving, the Word says it's easy to serve a good master. So even in a hard job, even in a job where you're thinking, oh, these people suck and I'm tired of being here. They're mean to me. And they make me work this and they make me work that. You, you, you better start speaking blessings over them. Because there's a lot of people out there that would like to be in your appointment. No matter how bad that appointment might be. Just remember, blessings are cursing. You, you choose with, with your mouth what you're going to do. Life or death, blessings are curses. There's no in-between. There's no gray area. Well, I kind of like them and I kind of bless them, but they're jerks. Can't be that way. God's not that way to us. And the great thing is, his is only one side of that. His is blessings. His is never curses. His is yes and amen. And he is faithful to perform his word in your life. So with the tithe ready, and your seed ready. Let's not forget now, 
again, I want to thank our, our pastors for doing a beautiful job on our, on our stage for Christmas. I like it. But I got to find, the buckets are up here for Renovate Youth. For those of you not familiar, right down here. All you got to do is walk around right here. There it is. Come on. Y'all, I'm used to picking those things up. and they, We must have just emptied them or something not too long ago. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, be, it, it takes folding money as well. Big wads of folding money weighing you down. You're walking around with it, tired of that big bulge in your pocket. Put it, lighten your load. <laughs> Put lighten your load. It goes to a great ministry. Father, we thank you, Lord, that... Lord, you are first and foremost in our lives. Your word is forever settled and forever true. We thank you, Father, for this day, this day that you've made. And, Lord, we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you that your joy in us is our strength, and we draw from that, Lord Father. We thank you, Father, that your answers are yes and I, amen. We thank you that you are our refuge, our fortress, Lord, you are our God in whom we trust. No matter the circumstance, Lord, we trust you. We trust your word and what it says in our lives. We agree with what the blood of Jesus says on our behalf today. That, Lord, we are redeemed from the curse. Sickness has no place in our lives. Death, a separation for eternity from you, has no place in our life. We are redeemed. And, Lord, lack and poverty have no jurisdiction in our lives. And we come against those spirits that would drive us, Lord. We thank you that in this season we are not driven to perform. We are not driven to please others. Lord, we are first driven to honor you. We thank you for the seed that you placed in our lives that enables us to give to others. And today, Lord, we sow seed well, we so see because, Lord, we love you, we honor you, and we look forward to your generous gifts that we get to pass through us into others' lives. So, Lord, right now, the tithe that is yours, that is first set apart holy, it is, it's our first priority in giving. It's the first thing that we desire to do. We offer the tithe today, Lord Father. And seed we sow today, Lord Father. We thank you that they together work for our good. They will be fruitful and they will multiply in Jesus' name. Amen. giving your tithe, the Lord's tithe, as you are sowing seed this morning. Think about the season that we're in, and in the natural, it can be a little chaotic, can it not be? Things to do, I know in our own life, it's the busiest time of the, of the year. How many of you are pretty busy? How many of you's minds are pretty busy? Some of you are half honest. How many of you have had to take time to quiet your soul? Amen. And just know that you're right on time and that it is okay and during this next song, I want you to just remember that it is in those times that you can quiet your mind and that you have the power and the authority to say, peace be still. And the word of God says, be still and know. That word means have intimate working knowledge that I am God. So this morning, know that he is God. In the 
quiet, in the still, in the chaotic, find that place, that still small voice, and follow it. Amen. You can hear the Spirit of God in the noisiest place. If it's noisy, if it's chaotic, and if it's in the natural or just thoughts, you can find that place of stillness. Amen. Praise God. Let's all stand on our feet. Let's, let's sing together. Let's go back several years to a song. We worship. How many of you know sometimes you've got to put on praise and worship? Oh, huh? yes. Can I have an amen from anybody? Amen. Your body won't always feel like praising the Lord. Oh, no. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. Come on, in the quiet, everybody. Let's sing.
for his goodness somebody today. Say his name all together a few times. Let me hear you. Jesus. <laughs> He's wonderful to us. somebody yes, 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 say yes, that yes. say this with me say the name, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, a strong tower. yeah say it again and let's hang on that the name of the Lord, the name of the Lord is a strong, is a strong tower. tower the righteous Say, that's me. That's me. Because I believe into Jesus. I believe into Jesus. Run into it. Run into it. And in that place, and in that place I'm, safe. I'm safe. All day. All day. Every day. Every day. Come on, give God thanks yeah. for it. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. Oh, man. Hallelujah. It's good to be here. Yes. Father, we're so grateful today that we can come together, okay. not in the name of religion, not in the name of any denomination, Hallelujah. but just coming together yes. in, the in the name of Jesus yes. Christ. Would you say this with me, church? I believe in my heart, in my heart that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he came in the flesh. I believe, he came in the flesh. I believe he's coming back. I believe he's coming back. Glorified. Glorified. I believe he was crucified. I believe he was crucified. I believe God raised him. I believe God raised him. Out of death. Out of death. Out of hell. Out of hell. And out of the grave. And out of the grave. Hey, <laughs> yes. Glory. Say, because of that belief. Because of that belief. I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. That I am saved. I am saved. And I'm learning. How to walk out, to walk out all, my benefits all of my benefits that already belong to me, already belong to me in, salvation. in salvation. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Say, that is the name. That is the name. And I will never be made ashamed. And I will never be made ashamed. God bless you. Thank you for yes. being here today. You may be seated. We, we, we thank you for being here, Amen. sir. Glory to God. Hello. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And I believe I receive in his name. You know, the, the word reveals to us, he said, hey, everything God's done with man, for man, good to see y'all, to man, he said, it's all fulfilled in Jesus Christ. 
Therefore, he says, this is the whole mystery of the thing, and I'm revealing it to you. Your life now is this, Christ in you. Christ in you, me. That's the way we need to think about this whole thing. Christ in me. And he said, if you'll, if you'll just believe that, if you'll hold on to that, then all of the life of God that is in Christ, you will have. Jesus said, believe that you receive and you shall have. Right? Glory. I believe, Brother Ty. I believe. I, and, and I'll just I'll, I'll, I'll put it maybe in the first person ongoing tense, present and ongoing. I'm believing. I'm believing. I am believing. I walk by faith. I live by faith. So believing is walking. Right? Living, that's believing. Right? Faith with corresponding action equals life. Amen? Living faith. Living faith. Living faith. Glory to God. Well, today I want to jump right into the Word. And while we're getting there, I, if you didn't receive a handout, raise your hand, we'll get you one. Uh, these handouts are very, very important I, I, because it's the Word of God. It's the truth of God, not because it's something that, that He's used me to put together, because He, he used me to put, to put it together. That's why it's important, because He used me. He, 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 Jesus said, if you receive whom I send you, as coming from me, you receive me. So you want to receive Jesus today? I'm not talking about being born again. I'm talking about receiving what he's saying, what, what he has for us right now at this very moment. I come to you, I, I come to you from an international basis. I noticed this morning as I was getting my jacket ready to wear, I noticed the label inside of it, and I'd never noticed it before. I've had this jacket a long time, but I'd never noticed the label before. It said, Made in Jordan. I thought, oh, God, this is right for today. Made in Jordan. Amen. My pants come from Mexico. So I come to you from Jordan. I come to you from Mexico. My boots... These particular boots were made at the Lou Casey factory in El Paso. So I come to you from Texas. I come to you from Santa Ana. But more than anything, I come to you from heaven with the word of the Lord. There's an interesting scripture that the Spirit of God brought to life in me many, many years ago, 1980. And I was in a little bitty office, a little church down in South Texas. And I was praying and I was talking to God. And I said, God, it just doesn't seem equitable to me that you would call me and plant me in a little town, Dilly, Catula, little town in South Texas. And you'd take someone else and you'd put them on a big piece of property by a lake, by the way, and give them jets to fly all over the world. And I was comparing myself to Brother Copeland, not in a jealous way, just I, I didn't understand. Yet your word is, is sure, I said, and true for everyone. So you've promised to bless me just as surely as you've promised to bless Brother Copeland. But I said, I don't have a mailing list with a million people on it who've covenanted to partner with me. He 
And he said this. He said, but son, I'm the same God. And I can bless you just as surely as I can bless him. He said, so I've put it in instruction that you should rejoice for his blessings. Rejoice for his blessings. You know, he said, when one cries in the body of Christ, we all, right? When one rejoices, we all rejoice. When one is blessed, you know why? Because he's being glorified. And, and so that began to help me focus my heart and you be glorified. And I know you'll bless me. I know you'll take care of me just as surely as I know you'll bless him and take care of him. And you will do whatever's necessary to accomplish the assignments that you've given to each one of us for your kingdom that you might be glorified. And then he, he reminded me of this. He said, I said, if anyone would receive. Now he's putting me into this place of receiving the same level of blessing from him that Brother Copeland does. He said, I said, if I send you a prophet and you receive them as a prophet from me, you will receive what? His reward. And you know what? I had received through the years his reward because that word that God was using him to bring had ignited areas of my life in faith and truth and in and, and, and God's reward. And in God's reward is his supply. Amen? Amen. Well, I don't know why I said that, but I know it was from the Lord. So I come to you in the name of the Lord. Today, I, I have, uh, my heart has been drawn to a simple little scripture, but uh, it, it holds so much for us. And I'm going to try to stay with the handout and uh, uh, try to get through the thoughts that the Lord has given me without preaching. And, and if you've never stood in this place, that's hard to do, isn't it? It, it really is difficult. I mean, I have to have the help of the Lord to be willing to stay on track because there's so much truth. And, and you know, at times he'll anoint us to preach. I think at other times I just try to cram more into the sack than the sack he supplied. You know, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I, I have a tendency to want to run it over. And so I'm going to try because this is a very important part of our spiritual growth and our spiritual maturity and our spiritual pathway for steadfastness in him. This is a very important part. It seemed like a very small point, but it's a very important part. So I pray that you will take the hand out and, and read all the scriptures. Let the Spirit of God speak to you and, 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 and feed your faith. Feed your faith. You know, you have to have spiritual nourishment to grow strong spiritually, to live strong spiritually, to be strong spiritually. You have to feed your faith. You have to build your, build your spirit man up. Your spirit man. You have to build your spirit man up. Because it's up to your spirit man to take possession of your soul. And it's up to your spirit man taking possession of your soul that determines you will take possession and control of your body, including your tongue. And God has, has assigned that within our words we would be what? Justified? Or? God's not justified. God has, listen, he has justified us in Christ Jesus. But to live justified now is a different matter. And, and so to, to walk and to live justified... 
I have to grow spiritually past practice or continually stumbling. I, I referenced this morning over, uh, almost at Heartland, over feed store this morning. Our, our grandbaby will be seven years old at the end of January. Today, she is a lot more mobile and can run and can play and can throw a ball and can ride a bicycle and do a lot of things that she couldn't do when she was first born. She was an infant, right? And then as she grew, she learned to walk. Crawl, walk, scoot, walk. She learned to walk. And so she toddled and learned how to get her equilibrium and balance and walk. Couldn't run yet. Just walk. Then she learned that she could... Now that's a little more than walking. And then she found out she could run. And oh, how she liked to run. Who, who was that uh, Forrest Gump? You know, he learned, and he liked to run. Well, Kennedy liked to run. She learned she could run, and she liked to run. I mean, if she was going from the kitchen to her chair in the, in the living room to watch TV, she ran. She liked to run because she was growing and experiencing new things. But you know, today she can run a lot faster and run a lot farther than she could back then. Why? Because she's learning. She'll learn a lot more about running before her life's over. I hope she learns how to fly up and down a basketball court and around baseball diamonds and you know, <laughs> that's just poppy. But but she'll learn a lot more about running and she'll learn a lot more about living. Well, God says that we should learn, we should mature, we should grow. By this time, he said in Hebrews, uh, the, the fifth chapter, you ought to be. And then he laid some things out that, that by that time in their lives spiritually, they ought to be doing these things, not still where they're at, doing what they were doing. And so he tells us that we should grow and that we should mature. Along the way, Kennedy has had many stumbles. Boo-boos. Yeah, she's had many wounds. Now, so have all of us. But you know, there's a difference in falling down and staying down. There's a difference in falling down and laying down. There's a difference in falling and laying down and calling up in self-pity and staying down. He said, hey, there's a scripture that, that meant a lot to me years ago because he showed me some things from my own life. But he said that the righteous may stumble, but they get up. They may stumble seven times, but the righteous get up. So getting up is a righteous thing to do. Not, not, not focusing on the stumble, not focusing on the failure, focusing on the one that's inside of you that is teaching you and leading you and guiding you and empowering you and has a goal and a destiny for you to get to and focus on that and get up. And don't do it in the power of your own might because if you try to do it in the power of your own might, your own might has already got you down. Your own power has already got you down. So you don't try to get up in your own power. 
You get up in the power of His might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. So don't judge yourself according to your stumbles and don't judge others according to their stumbles. <laughs> Which is life. He said if you would hold to, 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 to Jesus, if you would hold to the Lord, your Savior, if you would hold to Christ, the anointed one, his anointing, you yourself will have life. I like to think of it as, as, as holding on to a power source. And when you, as long as you hold on to that power source, you got power, baby. You got, yeah, yeah, whatever kind of power it might be, as long as you hold on to it, partake of it, it's issuing into you. And so in, with, with those little foundational things in thought, and, and, and things, I want us to look at stumbling. You know, there's, there's been many stumblings in my life that I would rather they not be there. At this point in my life, I'd rather they not been there. But you know what? Fact is, they were. They were. I remember stopping my pickup. I locked it up. I was I was on a ranch just north of Laredo, out actually out between Laredo and I used to call it the Devil's Triangle. <laughs> Laredo to Alice, you know, just up north. I was in McAllen, all that area, but uh, mainly uh, to Alice, and then from Alice back over to Catula and Dilly and Divine and all of that area. You know, I used to call that the Devil's Triangle because that's where I worked and operated in. And, and uh, every now and then I'd deviate out and go to hell and I'd go to Mexico. <laughs> it's never for anything good. Sometimes it was for propane cheap because back in those days I ran all my vehicles and tractors and everything off of propane. And I could go into Mexico and go to the horse races or to the bullfights or to whatever and, 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 and fill up my pickup for a nickel a gallon. And I had a 75-gallon tank in the back of my pickup that I drove on the ranch and things. And so, man, I could go a long time cheap. So that was my excuse for going to Mexico. That was not my pleasure. Sin gives pleasure. So that was one of the stumbling rocks, but all in that area. But one day I was, I was running down a caliche road, and I just locked my brakes up because it hit me. Because I was feeling particularly bad that day in that moment about stumbling, some stumbles. You ever feel do something and then feel bad about it? <laughs> if you don't, you're on dangerous ground because your heart's not convicting you. And, and I remember, and I just locked my brakes up on my truck. I used to like to kind of do stuff like that anyway. And I kind of fishtailed around and came up and dust, you know, and everything. And, and I stopped, and, and I jumped out of my truck, and, you know, like I was going to fight the devil physically, you know. I jumped out of my truck and slammed the door, and I said, You're right, devil, I did it. And it surprised me because here I am agreeing with the devil. I didn't realize what a great paradigm in my life that was. I said, you're right, I did it. But that's not the end of the story. I'm a Christian. 
I didn't know much spiritual terminology, but I, you know, I'd grown up in church. I remember the day I believed and received Christ as my Savior. And, and did anything happen? Absolutely. Absolutely. I rode my bicycle home that night from that little tent meeting in that little town, and I wasn't even afraid that something was chasing me and trying to get me. That was new life for me at that stage. There was no fear, no fear, you know, being out on the streets. No fear. And it's like, man, God, I've never... I've never felt this way before. Well, anyway, I said, I'm a child of God's. And I slammed the door. I said, you're right. And then I heard this coming out of me. I'd never thought about it before, but I heard it coming out of my heart. I knew. I didn't know I was speaking from the inspiration of the Spirit of Christ in me. But I knew that my mind wasn't working that way because I was taking all the guilt on myself. I was feeling really guilty. Really bad. And I heard this coming up out of me. And besides the rest of the story and being forgiven in Jesus Christ, let me tell you, I wouldn't even know how to do these things and act this way if it wasn't for you teaching me. You ever think about it? The devil didn't have place in man until... Adam exalted himself above God. And the devil came in. And from that point on, the devil worked in mankind. And until Jesus Christ, every human being that ever drawn, drew a breath had sinned and come short of the glory of God. Until Jesus Christ. Huh? So, for me to acknowledge sin, you know, that's not really a big deal. The big deal is if I lay down and stay down and keep wallowing in it and giving the devil place. That's the big deal. Because Jesus came to set me free. And to cleanse me from. And to empower me beyond. So I have hope today of a life in Christ beyond stumbling. Now I've heard I've heard ministers on radio and TV say, Well, you know, everybody sins. I mean, it's ridiculous to think that you won't sin. Well, rest assured, you having faith in sin, you know what you're going to do? You're going to sin. You're going to stumble. Now, maybe you've drawn a line in, 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 in your own moral code and said, I, I will not do that. Well, the devil can't make you do it. He'll just lead you to do other things. You know, like doubt. Fear. Not believing God. Hello? Desire other things. Oh, come on, you know you want this. I just think how much better your life would be if you'd do this. And I would think how much more complete you'd be. And think how much fun that would be if you'd just do this. And who's to say that you can't do this? The devil's pretty subtle, folks. Cunning. Stealthy. Covert. You know, I've never had the devil come up to me and say, I'm a demon, and I'm going to get you to sin because I'm going to tempt you to do this, and you know you want to do it. So let's go do it. Well, no, you'd say, Well, you're a devil. I'm not going to follow you. So they'll work, they'll work through you with thoughts, words, stimulate emotions. Hmm? 
uh, you know, there's certain things that I'm never tempted to do. Never. I mean, devils don't even try to tempt me in some things. Because they know he won't do that. You hearing me? So in, in that area, they've run away from you. Because you've submitted to God. You've submitted to truth. You should submit. And so you resist them in that area. And what did God say they would do if you submit to God and resist them? They'll flee from you. So there's certain things I'm never tempted to do. Sometimes the flesh will be stirred real big and the th suggestion will come, but it's like, I don't really want to do that. Those are pretty obvious thoughts. Huh? But what about where we stumble? What about where we stumble? The limiting factors. How far we go with God. And then where we start stumbling. Well, I want to look at that today. James, boy, I'll tell you what, I... All the Word of God is so rich because it's God. But I've heard Pastor Jason use this term before. He just said, well, Pastor James is just bare knuckles. I mean, you know, some of the things he said. Well, listen, he had fought through those things. So the Holy Spirit used him to bring these truths to us. Oh, he, there was a lot going on. A lot going on. And, I mean, think, he, he had absolutely denied his half-brother. He had, he had refused to believe the words of his parents. In fact, he had disgraced his own half-son. He, he went to get him, uh, you know, in defense of his mother and their place in the synagogue. Actually went to get Jesus forcefully one day and take him out of the meeting he was in teaching and take him and lock him up because he said... He has lost his mind. He's lunatic. Well, that's a work of the devil. There was his own half-brother believing that about Jesus. So he had come out of these things. He had come through these things. He had gotten up after some pretty severe stumbling. And yet he said this, in many things, we all stumble. Many things, we all stumble. And so I, I just put down something here in, in this context. He was, he was taking us into an area, had many areas building up to it and then after it, but he was taking us to an area to talk to us about our tongue. What is the tongue? It's a member of your body. But it has a category that God gave it as a member of your body. He said, your tongue is the most unruly member of your body. That means there's some discipline has to be brought to the tongue and to every member of our body. Has your mouth ever wanted anything that it really was not profitable and really didn't have any good attached to it? Sure. But the tongue. And 
And so I just put down a few thoughts about the tongue just as a, as a member of our bodies because he said we stumble, we all, we all. You know, it's a very prideful thing to think, oh, I never stumble. I am holy. I am righteous. I am a faith giant. That right there is stumbling. Just in case you didn't recognize it. A lot of pride in statements like that. You know why? Because the I is being put before him. He told me one time, he said, son, you need to get this straight. He said, if you come before me or you stand before me and the I is in front of me, you have it all out of order. You know, like, oh, God, I need. Oh, God, I want. Oh, God, I will. Oh, God, I will not. Oh, God, I w-. I said, then how do you say it? He said this to me. And, and, and I know it was him because my mind wasn't at the place of thinking this well, this clearly. It had not been renewed that much at this point in time. He said, well, a good way to start is to say, God, by your grace, I will. God, by your grace, I will not. God, by your grace, I can. I'll get. A, I'll stop this. I won't do this anymore. I've already proven that I couldn't by myself not do it because I had already chosen to do it. Years ago, there was something in my life and it was a repetitive thing. And I repented only God knows how many times through the years. I'm not going to tell you what it was because it doesn't matter. Stumbling is stumbling. And I'd repented. I'd told him how sorry I was. I'd even acknowledged it wasn't right. But it felt like it was, and it felt so good. And I grew so used to doing it and being it, and it's like, oh... I even came to the place of leaning over the fender of my pickup and hanging on to that fender in all sincerity with all my might and saying, Lord, unless you help me to do what I know is right to do and not do what is wrong to do, I can't do it on my own. I didn't realize at the time how much humility was really in that statement. You know, I think it's so interesting that God didn't tell us to ask him for forgiveness. He told us to receive our forgiveness. Huh? Yeah. Will you do something to save me from this? It's the same thing. He has done something to save us from it. And he says, if you will believe it in your heart, what I say, believe it in your heart. Let me tell you something. That's a whole lot more than just hearing one sentence one time and say, okay, I believe that. Now let's go on to the next thing. You just, you just revealed that you're not believing it yet. When, when, when you're pouring a foundation... You pour that thing in sections. If you just poured the first section and said, All right, guys, let's go. We poured the foundation now. We're through. No, you just got a portion of it. You got to keep at it to get the whole thing done. And when you got the foundation poured, you said, all right, boys, I'll, I'll, I'll send you your checks. This is great. Man, isn't that a great house? No, you, 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 you don't have a house there yet. 
You just have a foundation. You got to stay with it. You got to stay with it. You got to show up at the same place, right? With the same intention, we're going to accomplish today what needs to be accomplished for the final product. That's how we live. We, we live in God today. Now faith. You're not perfect yet. You're not complete yet. In Christ it's completed. But we're in process. Let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire lacking none that you, right? Let her have her perfect work. Let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect. And so, just thinking about those things, I want us to think about, listen, I don't want us to focus in these, in these times that we have together and bringing the word I don't want you to think about it like this is something I have to do. No, this is something that you believe that God has provided for you in Christ Jesus and you fight the fight of believing and believing that you receive. Don't fight the fight. Well, I've got to do this and I've got to do... See, you have it in the wrong order. The I is ahead of God. So how do I say it? God, by your grace, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit that you have provided in me, you are leading me in the pathway of your righteousness and you empower me in it. And greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world that would try to keep me from that pathway. Therefore, I believe I can do all things through Christ. Christ who strengthens me. So all that we've been talking about, I don't want you to look at those handouts and think, oh, this is something I've got to do. Listen, this is something that God has privileged you to do if you will believe it. Let, let me ask you this. Would you rather live your life in his life or would you rather live your life in Satan's death? Who's making the choice? How, how, does it, how does it reveal what choices I'm making? By the fruit of my life that's coming forth. Let me tell you, I haven't had to have that conversation with the devil in many, many, many years. You know why? Because I've grown past that. I've grown past that. In the spirit, I've grown past that. And so, let's, let, let's, look, let's look at the stumbling. James said it by the Spirit of God, in many things, we. Notice he put his own name in there. All stumble. So, I, this, you know what this does in me? It creates a desire in me to go to God to help me not to stumble. Because I recognize that I have the potential and the propensity, if you will, as just a mere human without God in control. I have the potential of stumbling. Right? Because we all have the capacity of a carnal mind. When's the last time you got mad at someone and blamed them for it? You know no one else can make you mad. 
You have to judge them guilty of something that you don't like, and therefore your soul is stirred up against them. As Pastor Jason used to say, well, in many things we all, this word of God by James is the description of what man is, even the Christian. We are Christian humans, right? So without the Christ working in us, we have the mere human mind working. It, it has amazed me through my life in the past what my mere human mind would justify me doing. Well, you have a right for that. You, you, you have the right to do that. Well, you, you, they owe that to you. Well, you, 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 you know, they're not making you happy, so go find somebody who will. And all of these are subtle, subtle implants into the natural mind. And my way of countering that is to be spiritually minded. Be spiritually minded. Jesus said, my words are spirit. He said, Father, your words are spirit. Father, you're the father of all spirits. Be spiritually minded. Seek first the kingdom of God and his way of being and his way of doing things. And all these things will be added to you. The world is giving themselves to gain it, giving themselves to try to find it, giving themselves trying to obtain it, and they're giving themselves to the God of them giving themselves. <laughs> he's not the God of He's not the God of money. He's the God who subordinates people's desires in covetousness and greed to give themselves for money. He said, Abraham, you need to come to understand this. In, in, in your walking with me, in your progression with me, and you're experiencing me, I have given you power to get great wealth. All that, that you've obtained, all that's come to you, has come by my power. So great wealth couldn't be evil because God doesn't do evil. It's, it's the hungering after. It's the seeking after. It's the giving myself to it to obtain it. Hello? What? Well, I don't want to even go there. You can put it in any category you want to. So even the Christian... This description is accurate when he's not accessing the living grace of God by faith. Who can stumble? That's a good word since God gave it to us. All can stumble. But in Christ Jesus, we've been empowered not to stumble. That's good news, isn't it? Because the devil is walking about seeking whom he may devour. You know, he, he, all of his authority, or we might say everything that, that has been given to him by man to steal, kill, and destroy through has been disarmed by Jesus Christ. Said he has brought him, King James says, to naught. He's brought him to be a big zero. 
He doesn't have teeth to chew you up. He doesn't have claws to rip you apart. He doesn't, are you hearing me? He doesn't even have the power of a lion anymore. He's got to walk about as a roaring lion, seeking whom it will paralyze and they will lay down. And can you get this image in your heart of somebody laying down and just laying there, I might say this, in self-pity, hopelessness. I can't, I can't change. I, I can't stop doing this. I, I just can't, I, I can't be different. I can't be, just laying there. And he's walking around seeking whom he may devour. You are, you're drawing, you're drawing devouring spirits to you. And can you imagine this picture of somebody just laying down and laying there and a lion that doesn't have enough power to knock them down and hold them down, doesn't have claws to rip them apart with, doesn't have teeth to devour them with, but that lion just gumming and slobbering and gumming and until they finally kill you? That seems pretty stupid, doesn't it? when all that individual would have to do is just get up, pick up the sword of the Spirit, use the shield of faith against him, and stand and not slide and not run back and not draw back, and with the breastplate of faith and love of God and having total confidence in that and in his righteousness and his truth is locking this whole thing together, and you take up the sword of the Spirit and the shield of faith against him, and you, instead of getting devoured, you use the weaponry that God has given you, his word in your heart and your mouth, and you total defeat him. Who walks away from that setting devoured? He is, right? He's been devoured in your victory. I like that picture better than laying there and letting him suck my head up into his mouth and can't chew me and can't claw me, but he's just... <laughs> 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 he finally, you let him drown you. I don't like that picture at all. And that's what people do. Instead of when you've done all to stand, stand. You know, he's, here he's talking about stumbling. I, I want you to capture this. You've not fallen every time you've ever stumbled. Falling is the next step past stumbling. Huh? But if you go down with a stumble, God says, get up. And he showed me years ago, he said, when you stumble, don't look to the left or to the right, and don't sure don't turn around and look and, 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 and concentrate on what you stumbled on. He said, you keep your eyes on me. And that way you won't go down to the left or you won't go down to the right and you sure won't go back. You keep your eyes on me. And he said, and then when you do get up, your first step will be in the right direction. And he said, and this preaching that you've heard, to where you lose it all and have to go back to the bottom of the mountain, go back into the valley every time you fail. He said, that's false. He said, I tell you, if you stumble, you get up. You haven't lost it all. You get up where you were, and in me you go forward, and you'll be going the right direction. And I need to be quiet. We haven't hardly introduced this thing. I 
I don't even know where to go, God. Second Peter tells us, he gives us the, the clearest picture of going from faith in God that I know of. Faith in God. Now, it's drawn out in other scriptures too, but at this point in time, it's the clearest picture for me to going to the place in him where we will never stumble. Well, I like that thought, don't you, honey? I'll preach to you. You're nodding your head. I like that thought. Transforming in him to the place I will never stumble. Now, I started off in him because he said, he's, in, in my faith, he's given me great and precious promises that I might be a partaker, a participator, a partner with him in this new life. I like that thought. Jesus said, that's why I've come, so that you may have this life and have it more abundantly. I mean, you do realize that in Christ Jesus, in the Father God, in the Holy Spirit, there's no failure. You may be challenged with difficult times because you're in the world. But he said, rejoice, knowing the truth. Huh? Many ways we could go there. But in Second Peter, in chapter 1, he says, add these things to your faith. And the first thing he says to add is, it seems to me like, is the greatest missing ingredient in a lot of Christians' lives. It's called virtue in the King James and excellence in, in, other, in, in other translations. But when you really look at what he's talking about, excellence, and, and, and it's, it's, I like to think of it as Christian energy, being energized to be a good Christian. Just be energized. I want to know what you've said about this, God. I'm going to hunger. I'm going to thirst. I did a study on those words one time, and, and really it comes to more than just having a little appetite and, you know, like saying, well, I think I'll go make me a sandwich, but something you could live with or without. It literally means if you don't get that next bite of food that is laid before you, you will starve to death. If you don't get that next bit of fluid that is laid before you, you will die of starvation. That's the kind of hunger and thirst, he said, to, to have in us. God, I know I can't do this without you. I know I can't make this without you. I, I know I can't change without you. God said a leopard cannot change his own spots. I see so many Christians trying to be good Christians. And they're struggling and they're frustrated and they're wondering why they're not any better Christian than they are. And they're wondering why they, these old feelings come back and these old thoughts come back and these old desires come back and these old words come back and these old actions come back. It's because they're not drawing through faith, the grace of God that's given to them in Christ Jesus. And so in, in, in many lives, I, I see the lack of that hunger and thirst. I, I've seen it in many preachers. They think they know because I'm a preacher. See, I have an ordination certificate right there on my wall. You know what ordination matters with God? That which has come by the Spirit. That's right, Pastor. Well, I have, I have a degree from this particular seminary. I've known a lot of preachers that had a lot of letters behind their name and thought they knew a whole lot of things. 
that had little to perhaps no spiritual energy in it. Now, I'm not picking on preachers, but it does to apply to us. This preacher right here, Pastor James, put his name in that column. That's one of the big troubles of getting victory is, first of all, looking at your own weaknesses. It, it, it just keeps surprising me over and over and over how we in the natural want to blame somebody else for our failures. We want to blame circumstances. We want to blame the world. We want to blame our spouse. We want to blame our bosses. We want to blame just, well, it's just the economy. You know, God's economy isn't one whit dependent upon the economy of man. He told Adam, he said, Adam, over by that river, gave him the river, gave him the place. He said, I put fine gold there. Because God knew that man would come to the place of using gold. Who supplies our every need? According to his riches in manifestation. Why should I fear what man can do to me? We're instructed that in the Word, by the way. That's not my statement. Why should we fear what man could do to me? You know, Mr. Ford, I like to read quotes by great people. I like to read those. Do you like to read those? I do. They just stimulate my thinking a lot of times. But Mr. Ford, the one who started Ford Industries and many other things, he said, if someone could come and take my wealth away from me, if you just watch me, I'll rise and be rich again. And he said, if they did it six times, seven times, it won't keep me back. I'll be rich again. He had it in him. And he knew who he was depending on, too, by the way. I'll say this about myself today. Am I still tempted to stumble? Yeah, but it's in much more subtle ways. But thank God, I'm stumbling less and less and less and less. And there's things the devil doesn't even tempt me in. Because he knows that's just not even a possibility. I've already stood against him and shown him that's not something that I want, that I'm willing to do. I'll trust God. But he'll keep trying. He'll test our faith. Jesus said, you're going to have tribulation because you're in the world. But that second Peter is awesome. But he says this, that if we will follow what he says to do, develop this and add this to it. And develop these two things and add this to it. Develop these two things and add this to it. And he said, if you'll do these things and they're abounding in you, they will keep you. They'll guard you from stumbling. That's good news, folks. That's good news. But it's so often, the, the, the biggest obstacle is for us to ever come dealing with the question, what I ought to think about these many stumblings. Huh? Husbands, are you loving your wives 
as Christ loved the church? Well, now, Pastor, I, I just believe that's an impossible thing. I mean, me love my wife like Jesus loved the church? Yeah. Man, you've been given grace to do that. In Christ Jesus, you've been given grace to do that. Wives, are you honoring and respecting and adapting yourselves to your husbands? Well, you just don't know what a scoundrel they are. Well, how many scoundrels did Jesus give himself for in love? Maybe you. Huh? Maybe you. Definitely me. We all. Our salvation is in Christ Jesus, folks. I've already proven it's not in me. But thank God he empowers me and leads me in truth to believe. And he counts that as righteousness. And he moves on the behalf of the righteous. Amen? So I live and move as his child in him. Wow, what a place. He did not stumble. He's the only human being to ever walk on this earth that did not stumble. Even Adam himself stumbled. That's why stumbling became a characteristic of the human race. Through him, sin entered, and with sin came death. The rewards, the, the, the payment that sin demands. You know, it's sin that's demanding judgment, not God. Jesus said, I didn't come to condemn you. I came that the world through me might be saved. In him, we've been redeemed from the curse of the law of sin and death. Hello? That's why God said, if you will receive forgiveness, that he will not only grant you forgiveness, but he will cleanse you from the unrighteousness. I've, I've been forgiven of sin many times, but I went back out and did it again. So I, I hadn't been cleansed from the unrighteousness because I hadn't accepted it. I hadn't received it. And you know why I hadn't? In that one thing, I'll, I'll just reference back to that. It's the same in all things, but in that one thing, I would not look at that as my own stumbling. Therefore, I didn't confess it to him. And you know what? The pride in me didn't want to say that about me. I didn't want to say I was that kind of guy. I didn't want to say, that's what I'm doing. I wanted to blame it on Mexico and the worm. Thank God for redemption. Thank God for cleansing. Thank God for freedom. You know, I, I am so sorry to say this, but I've been going towards sin, knowing that I was going to sin, and in my heart already asking God to forgive me. Now, folks, that's just giving the flesh too much power. 
See, that's in bondage. He said he came to set the captive free. He said that God put an anointing on him to set me free. To heal the broken spiritedness. The broken hearted. And to set at liberty those who have been bruised through the circumstances of life that Satan was behind. You know, I, I've actually had Christians that, that didn't expect to ever have much over little. Because they had no hope that it could be any different or any better. Hmm? But your faith will produce what you confidently expect from God because He promised it. That's why He said, in your faith, take these promises and add these things to your life and be a partner with God in this divine life. We're going to have to close. Greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. I pray that you'll take the hand out and read the scriptures and let God grow these truths in us. We are not intimidated as the children of God. Right? We don't draw back, brother. Because God can't have pleasure in those who draw back. Not that he doesn't like or condemns or gets mad at. He can't have pleasure. Just one little simple thing we know gives him pleasure. God has pleasure in the prosperity of his saints and that's much more than just material prosperity but it certainly includes it in fact you can't you you can't abide in material prosperity without your soul prospering i've known i've known people that in the category of churchy or churchanity, religiosity, they would be considered very good people. I, I was telling God one time, I said, God, they're a good person. And, I, and here I heard him say so authoritatively and so strongly, he said, by whose standards? Mine or man's? like that changed my whole paradigm of understanding what a good person is. I want to be a good person. That applies to me. Hello? And, and so we, we, we grow in the truths and we walk out the truths and we experience the benefits. That's what David was doing. He said, oh, so don't forget the benefits of God. Listen, I don't try to earn the benefits. I can't earn the benefits. And God can't be conned. I learned that a long time ago. And I remember when that hit my mind and my spirit. You're sitting there nodding your head, so I'll preach to you now. And, 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 and I, I came to the understanding I can't con God. I might can con people sometimes, but I can never con God. I've grown to the place today I don't want to because I realize in His truth is where victory is. Father, bless your children, everyone. Everyone. I'm going to read the prayer thoughts here over you that I put in your handout. Wow, I didn't didn't get very far down that list. I guess I preached too much. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, as one who's ready to stumble in the natural, but I would choose to give honor to you who are mighty to keep me from stumbling. Yours alone is the might and power. God, we desire to be strong in your might. Strong.
strong in your power, strong in you, Lord, and in the power of your might. Who's mighty to keep me from stumbling? Guard me. Yours alone is the might and power. I take you as my keeper. I look to your love, which has chosen me, and walk in the fulfillment of your word. And I take your word, and I believe I receive. You shall never stumble. And in you, I say, amen. Amen. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And I look forward to being with you in the MOH tonight. God bless you, and have a wonderful, wonderful evening.